Hello and welcome to a new episode of Laravel Core Adventures, where we take pieces of our favorite PHP framework and together figure out how they work in the background. This is level number three of Laravel Facades. So let's dive right in. Now that we know what facades are and how they actually work, I think it's time to deal with testing facades. So this is important because many developers don't like facades because they say they are difficult to test or you can't test them at all. And I have to agree, at least it looks like you can't test them. This is because since we're not using dependency injection for these classes, we can't just swap the implementation out for our tests, right? And that's what you want to do in your tests. For this video, we're going to use another route that I've defined here. It's for the endpoint invoice and we also get an ID and we pass them to the invoice controller and to the process method. In this process method here, we are going to call the generate method on the invoice generator, which is a dependency of this class here. And after we've created the invoice, we're going to respond with this JSON response at the end. Inside this generate method on the invoice generator, we would first define some logic here to generate an actual invoice. But we don't care about that for this demo. For us, more interesting is this dispatcher call here at the end. We're going to send out an invoice generated event if an invoice was created. And this dispatcher is injected through the constructor here at the top of this invoice generator class. It's a pretty basic example and we often refer to this constructor injection as good practice because we now have much more flexibility when we want to test this class. So let's take a look at what the test looks like. In this test, we want to make sure that the application dispatches an event after the invoice was created. So one way to do that is through using a mock. First, we're going to mock the dispatcher class because that's the class that we use to send out the event after the invoice was created. And with this mock, we can now run the should receive method on this mock, which just says um, we make an assertion that the dispatch method will be called on this mock. And then all what's left to do is we're going to create a new invoice generator. And as a dependency, we have the dispatcher class and instead of a real implementation of the dispatcher, we're just passing here the mock that we've created. So that's what you normally do in your test so that we can focus on the invoice generator and we don't need to focus on how the event system works. And then at the end here, we're just creating a new invoice. So that's our test. Let's see if it works. Okay, perfect. So this test is working. Okay, nice. But now I want to show you what it looks like when you use facades instead of an injected class. Okay, now here we are getting rid of the constructor. And we also don't need this anymore. And let's also get rid of the namespace here. And now we can uncomment this. And now instead of this, I want to use the event facade. It's this one here. And on this event facade, I'm going to call the dispatch method, the same we did before and also with the same event that we've created earlier. Okay, this looks good to me. Let's try it out in the browser. No errors here, we get our response back. So this looks good. Okay, so what about our test now? The dispatcher is no longer dependency of our, our invoice generator class. So we can't pass anything here now. And we also can't use this anymore. Okay, so how can we test that our facade has been called? Actually, it's pretty basic. We can use on our event facade. Let me just get rid of this namespace here and mockery as well. And now we're using the event facade here as well. And now on this facade, we can run should receive as well. So it looks pretty much similar to what we did before. 
we say we want to make an assertion that the dispatch method will be called on the event facade and the rest should be the same. So let's try it out. And as you can see, the tests are still working. So how is this even possible? Let's follow this should receive class to the base facade. And let's see what we have in there. Okay, now here in this should receive method, we are first getting the name of the facade there that we are currently using. So in our case, it must be the event key. And then we are creating a mock. And this is quite interesting here because we're first checking if we already have a mock and then we use the mock that we already have, which is then the resolved instance. And if not, we're creating a fresh mock instance here with this method. And in there, it's pretty nice because we're also using the tab method of Laravel. So we're creating a new mock and then we're going to swap out the current instance that we have for the facade we're using with the mock. So this is what this swap method does. And then at the end here, we are allowing mocking for protected methods. And we need to do that because normally that's not allowed when you use mockery. Then let's go back to our test. So we've seen now how this should receive works. So it's pretty similar to what we're doing with mockery. And in the back, we are also using mockery. But now um, we can use this should receive method directly on the facade. And as we have seen, the test is also working with this. Okay, but what about the situations where you don't use mockery? Maybe you have your own fakes or mocks that you create for your class. Okay, then you can easily run the swap method here on this facade. It's similar to what should receive is doing in the background. And here you could then add your custom event mock file, for example. So this would work as well if you don't want to use mockery. So that's also pretty nice. And there is one thing more I want to show you. For some facades like for mail, notification, or even event, Laravel also provides so-called fakes. Let me show you what that is. So instead of using this method here on the event facade, I can now use the fake method. And when we take a look at this method, we can see that we're using the swap method again. And now we are swapping the instance of the event with a custom event fake class. And when we take a look at this event fake class, we can see that there are a bunch of helper methods in there that we can use for testing. So for example, we have this assert dispatched method where we can test that a event was dispatched. Or we also got a third dispatch times method where we can check that um, event was dispatched multiple times. And there are many more. And now inside our test after the invoice was generated, we can now run an assertion like a third dispatched. And here we now pass the class of the event that we make an assertion to. So it is called invoice generated. Yeah, invoice generated. And let's provide the whole class name like this. And yeah, let's see, this should work as well. Let's run this test. And it does. And what I like about this method now is that it's much more better to read. We're first saying we want an event fake. So we are faking the event system. And then here we're making an assertion that a specific event was dispatched. And this is a little bit better to read than the example we had before. So after all, testing facades work like a charm. We can easily swap their implementations out. That's what we usually do in our tests. So that's pretty much the same. And additionally, Laravel provides lots of helper methods to make testing even easier. And they are much better to read like here in this example. Again, in the end, it is up to you if you want to use facades or not. But if you do, please test them because that's super simple like I showed you here in this example. And that's it for this video. Stay tuned and see you.